the first rule of this episode is you don't talk about, okay, this is corny. It's been done to death. Listen, we're talking about Fight Club in this episode, so stay with us. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast Thank you one and all for joining us. If you're new to our podcast, you found us. We, we've been trying hard to reach you. So finally, we're, we're glad we were able to, to get in touch and connect. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff for you to check out. Music podcasts, movie podcasts. Uh, if you go to YouTube, we've got the videos there. We've got past live shows there as well. There's a, a treasure trove of stuff, Eric. Would you say it's a veritable treasure trove? Uh, yeah, I of think multimedia so. goodness. Maybe, maybe, perhaps too much. <laughs> perhaps too much. All right, we'll start deleting. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm Top, joking. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do an episode. <laughs> top five episodes we need to delete. That'll be one of our next top five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> top five clunkers. Yeah. Um, in addition to Eric, of course, all as always, by here with us talking about music and movies, we've got some guests uh, making their their triumphant returns. Uh, is of course Nick Leshy. Always great to have Nick with us. Thank you. Always great to be here. Thank you very much. Of course, and uh, sitting askew and not totally centered in the video. So if you're watching her and you only see half her face, that's Christy Cuomo. Hi. Dean's got OCD. Hello. Thank he's, you for he's having me. He's suffering from OCD big time. Yeah. Well, we want to, well uh, if you go on, if you watch us on YouTube, you'll see some of the older videos where. It's half of our face and it just it's, looks kind it's of anal. So we want we want the full yeah, multimedia. So we, you experience. don't want this, right? You don't want us like yes. leaning this to side. That's how to my side. brother okay. used to drive in the car. <laughs> yes. Unless you're dr unless unless you've been drinking a lot and you slowly start to like arm out the window, like hey, over. you know, there you go. <laughs> I still drive with my arm out the window. Nick, do you drive with your arm out the window? No. Why not? You're from the Bronx. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always used to. I'm a big That's baseball like a requirement. fan. They used to say like never drive with your arm out the window. I was never a baseball player, but I was like. You never know. What does that mean? Because you, if you damage your arm or something, in an you're not a, exactly, you're not a baseball player. Uh, no, but it's just like it was ingrained in my brain. Needs his arm? Don't. All right, Nick, 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 who who told you that? Like in that voice, that I don't know, Bella I, Lugosi. I, <laughs> you can't put your arm you out the window. Your, like what was that? <laughs> you lose your arm. <laughs> It was the same person that said if uh, they was it they slap you in the back the, the expression you have in your face uh, freezes or something. Do you remember that one? That explains, I, I've that never explains heard that a lot. Either. That explains my face a lot, Ben. By the that way, I, I, I love your your new profile pic, Dean. On uh, why? Thank on you, Facebook. Yes, that. why? Thank you, thank you very much. If you find me on on Facebook, you'll see I don't really change profile pictures, but no. uh, it was due time to uh, find a toothless photo of me from when I <laughs> when I was quite young, I fell and tripped and knocked my two front teeth back up into my gums. Um, wow. And then oddly enough, Ugh. school pictures came around. So I have this weird like one tooth look like, you know, that explains a lot. It so explains you, a whole lot. So, so you know, your teeth were like up into your sinus cavity or what? Yeah, I mean, they, they got uh. knocked back up into my two front teeth because I hit the I hit a uh, a dresser drawer knob. Oh, I tripped man. on I tripped on a rug and fell, and my two front teeth hit a dresser drawer knob, and they got knocked up. And then eventually, they just kind of fell back down. This, this seems. And I have a little Indiana Jones scar as a result. This seems wow. strangely apropos for the. I was, was going to say it's oddly tonight. appropriate for Fight Club. Yes. yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, my well, my brother was chasing my actually my brother was chasing me through the house, and actually, what he was yelling, he goes, "I wanted to destroy something beautiful as I was running," and then I tripped and. <laughs> Thank and you, you got hurt, that, but the vase, the vase was okay. Thank you for getting that, Eric. Somebody, <laughs> somebody got it. Brad Pitt had a chipped tooth as well. He took off his cap yeah. for this movie. Yeah. yeah. So he wanted that yeah, authentic, it's all connected. Yeah. Lived in luck. It's so, method, man. Method. <laughs> that's it. Method to the madness. Um, so we're talking about Fight Club. If if we we eventually get around to it, uh, which which I think we will, we'll start. <laughs> Um, we're going to be there talking about Fight Club. There it is. There it is in all its glory. There it is. Mischief, Mayhem, and Soap. That's what this movie is really about, is really those three things. Um, and we'll get to the stats, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get right into this, because there's a lot, to, a lot to chew on, a lot of fat to chew on. Um, this was released in October of 1999. 
directed by the great David Fincher. Mm. Although at the time he wasn't considered so great yet. I think this one put him over. Uh, based on the book by Chuck Palahniuk, which was published in 1996, which was a bestseller, did pretty well. $65 million budget made $101 million at the box office. Now that is a return on investment. Uh, it just wasn't what they were expecting no. to be no. the return on investment from Fox and the Searchlight or whoever it was. Um, was, was expecting a little bit more based on on the the name power that they had, which is, you know, stars uh, Edward Norton, who was kind of on the, on the rise at this point. Uh, his star was rapidly rising. Brad Pitt, who was becoming a mega star, and then Helena Bonham Carter, uh, who was kind of an indie darling, but they, but it kind of, you know, that she brought the right, uh, the right vi vibe to it as well. Brad Pitt got like $17.5 million out of that $65 million budget. So that was a nice payday for him. But um, I, I think it was it's renowned as a cult classic. Yeah. Would you say now, Nick, that, that this has kind of achieved cult status? Although, like I said, it, it made more than it more than it was supposed to. So it did turn a profit. Yeah. I mean, I, I heard it underperformed. I never saw it in the movie theater. Um, I actually heard the spoiler about it before it came out. And then oh, only man. later did I find wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. That... Was that a friend? <laughs> Who told you? Because that's uh, no, a shitty think... that's a shitty friend. No, I was hearing about it, I think, on the yeah. news because apparently okay. Rosie Rosie O'Donnell, the week it came out, was uh talking on her talk show that she had seen it and don't go see it. And apparently she spoiled it. And um I mean that's not why I didn't go see it, but I think a lot of people I just was hearing about the plot uh before yeah. I even went to see it. So yeah. I wish I'd seen it kind of just blind. You know, yeah. like I'd seen Pulp Fiction and some of these other movies without knowing what to expect. Six um, Sense, Six right? Sense was another yeah, one. Like you right? need to go and block, you need to go yeah, in. I just think you you get more out of it that way. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if that had an impact on it, but definitely it's it's one that like over the years, especially when people can kind of freeze frame it and revert. So like on DVD and mm -hmm. you know you know now streaming, um, I think it, it just plays to that where I think people can just kind of watch it over and over again, get new things out of it. Um, so it probably plays better um, that way. But seeing it on the big screen, I wish I'd had the chance to do that. Yeah. Eric, you're, you're famously renowned for not having seen this film very often, uh, if, right. if at all. Right. And and you're you're going to be approaching this from a different uh, a possibly this different headspace. The, this was actually the fourth time I've mm -hmm. seen it in this in ever since it came out so yeah mm -hmm. it had been a good, a good 15 years since i had seen it last so you didn't initially um, see it, it when it came out though right i did i did i saw it in oh, the theater did. okay so you did see um, it in the theater okay. with our our friend andy okay um and i re i distinctly remember the first thing he said when it was over was this movie was brilliant <laughs> but there's going to be a lot of problems with this. Like I see a lot of people mm -hmm. <laughs> getting, you know, taking this movie, yep. in, you know, in the yeah. wrong direction. Copycat. And, and, yeah. Yeah. yeah and Copycat. Just, yep. Okay. Just, Christy. Um, I did see in the theater. Uh, mm -hmm. l loved it immediately. Um, I, I, I do agree with you, Eric, that there, after, and even more in, in hindsight, as I'm older, um, there's a, there's a lot of problems that could come from this movie. Um, <laughs> one of the things was that they actually, um, uh, I, I think is a, uh, is, isn't it pronounced Polonik? Is actually his name? Polonik? Polonik? Polonik, yeah. I think the author? The, uh, yeah. the author? We'll call yeah. his the author. Brother, his brother, <laughs> I think, was like an engineer or something and actually knew how to make bombs. Uh, so they purposefully, like, and he didn't write the screenplay. He refused to write the screenplay. But when when it was all being worked on, they purposefully, like in the book and I guess in the screenplay, didn't put the exact recipe for it because they they did realize that it could be a little bit problematic. But but I, I definitely think this is a, a cult classic. Um, I think Leonardo DiCaprio to a Martin Scorsese, this is like a generation Citizen Kane. Um, in, in oh. terms of just the ending and when you're when everything's revealed, yeah. yep. but um, I I've seen this movie I, I, I countless times, well more than Eric. <laughs> it's been a lot more than four. Hey, yeah, I I, I, saw it in a, I saw it in a theater as well. Um, as I've said in the past, I'm I'm one of those people that don't I don't go in trying to figure stuff out. I I go where the story takes me. You know, and sometimes to, yeah. to a disadvantage, right? Because I I don't try and like figure stuff out. I take I take things at face value, and I guess that's one of the I guess it, it may be a a good thing 
so I'm not trying to, if I'm trying to second guess and figure out a film, that means I'm taken out of it. That means there's something that's distracting me and I'm, I'm coming out of it and, and nitpicking it. Um, with this movie, I was totally, totally into it just because of, of the story and the dynamic and the characters and, and the pacing and all that great stuff was kind of, kind of move. It moves, it keeps you moving and, and it, it doesn't give you a whole lot of time to think because the, there's the narration and there's just all these different dynamic stuff that's going on. There's some special effects going on. There's, there's a lot of different things happening in the film. So I remember at the end was just like, like what the hell just happened? Like what, yeah. what, like what, what, you know, even what, like, like Sixth Sense was a twist ending and this was not really a twist ending because you, you know, it, it, it was like a third act reveal and then it had to resolve itself, but it was still at the end. You're just like, you know, I, I still d don't really know what happened, you know, and, and you can credit, <laughs> I guess you can credit David Fincher and you talk about cult films. He is known as such a big director, but this was, this was Fincher's fourth film, right? Yeah. His debut was alien three, which got savaged, which in hindsight is probably one of the best of the sequels outside of aliens. Yeah. He, don't, he wants nothing problems. to do with it, but yeah, not, it has not, his problem, not but, Fincher's but, fault though. It's no, but every script, right. all those alien versus predator and all that other. Like, oh yeah, of course. Like yeah. Alien Three kind of is like okay, yeah, it's got some. It's got the Finch. What would be some of the Fincher style? Uh, after that, he did Seven in nineteen ninety five, which is still a, his best, I think. A, 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 at the time, a cult film as well. It's got a little bit of that twist ending too, right? It's got a little a little shocker ending. Um, the game was when I caught up. I saw the game in the theater in nineteen ninety seven. Another. That's twist. A great he, one. He, yeah. he was kind of like on that same same track. Another twist ending. Yeah, it, with that great Michael and, Douglas, and that film didn't do anything. Interestingly and enough, for seven, for seven, he was Fincher accidentally received the ending that we see in the film, but it wasn't. They weren't going to use that, and he, him, along with Brad Pitt, advocated hard for it to use that ending, which is why we see that ending in the, in the film seven, they wanted more of a happier ending. The, uh, the mm -hmm. movie uh, studios, they didn't want what we see and it would have ruined the movie. Absolutely. If, 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 so yeah. what is it? So uh, what was the, the original ending? I think it was like, what's in the box. And it was puppies. It, yeah. Maybe it was like a kitten. <laughs> like he's was, that the kitten? was that the happier ending? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't no? know how you put a happy. I don't know cat. how you put a happy ending on a movie where it rains the entire time, but this, yeah. Yeah. the sun comes out. Exactly, it's the, it's the sun in a box. And and then oh. and then like I said in '97, you had the game, which was just another one of these atmospheric, you know, noirish films. You know, Michael mm -hmm. putting Michael Douglas through the ringer this time. He was at the top of his game. He was in his his career renaissance in the '90s, Basic Instinct, and just all the great stuff he was doing. So another great film that didn't do a lot right so now comes fight club which is probably the biggest budget thing he did the two two of the biggest stars at the time uh with brad you know brad pitt had, had just come off of meet joe black which was kind of a failure um and then before that he did seven years in tibet which was kind of a dramatic turn for him and kind of him shedding uh you know becoming taking serious as a taking seriously as an actor more so you know so whoa, brad whoa. pitt was in a, in kind of a in a, in a cocoon state Whoa, 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 whoa. Some people were taking him seriously. That's when you started to take him seriously. <laughs> and I speak for the masses. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. One of the things I took away from the film is it, 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 it challenged me in the sense that uh, there, it, it, you're required to do some of the work. Is I like to think of it that way. It, it requires multiple viewings. And that's one of the, the very first thing I, and when I, when the movie was over, I'm like very much like Blade Runner in the, in the, in the background there uh, had that effect on me when I was younger. It's like, what the hell did I just watch? And then on, on revisiting the film again and again, you get something more out of it. And then each time you watch it, I, this is my fourth time seeing it. I, I, I've there's I've gotten something different each time. I've watched it this time. I'm, I'm it completely changed my whole view mm -hmm. being that it was so long. Yeah. Um, but I, I really, I like that. I, I like movies like that, that leave you with that, that you can, you know, think about it as soon as you leave the theater, you're digging about it a week later, two weeks later, a month later, you may, you know, you may not want to go back and see it right away. Perhaps maybe you need some time to, to kind of digest it. Um, but this definitely had that, that kind of effect on me. And I remember, 
the one thing I think I told you, Dean, uh, uh, the first thing I thought of was like, I wanted to go home and take a shower after I saw this movie. Cause it's <laughs> just, it just makes you feel so. And I, and I mean that literally like, cause it's so dirty, you know, Fincher has that knack of really putting that out there and really taking that neo-noir aspect and, and pushing it over the edge where it's, it's so visceral and so like nasty and it's like very uncomfortable. And it, the thing I love most, I think about this film is the fact that I, I love it, but I don't like it. If that makes any sense. Like it's like, it's, it totally it's, does. It's not, yeah. a, it's not a movie that you like to watch, but you're, you're compelled to watch. And when you're, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're engaged. So, yeah. So like, I, I don't visit it very often, but I'm, I'm glad that I do. And I'm glad do, that I did, you know. Do you think so. because you haven't seen it in 15 years and 15 years is, is a long time where as an individual, you, you, you grow or your, your viewpoints yeah, change. Yeah, absolutely. Or, and so, so when you watch yeah. a film like this, because I could say the way I watched it when it came out in 1999 and the way I've watched it over the years, like you, you have different ideas or, 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 or mm -hmm. views on how some of, on some of the topics that are in this, because there are a lot of, there's a lot of things right. going on yeah. in here that are, are much like when we talked about American Idiot that are very relevant to today. And, to, and, to the times and important and, yeah. to our yeah. society today. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, absolutely. Just a, uh, yeah. Be before we get into just a little brief, some some behind the scenes, a little brief history. Um, before Brad Pitt was secured, uh, you know, the producers were actually looking at Russell Crowe. They really wanted Russell Crowe for the Tyler Durden role. Um, he might have been able to. I, I think Brad Pitt brings a different kinetic kind of energy to it. You know, Russell Crowe's, you know, even back then he was kind of, you know, he was more methody. I think Brad Pitt was, is a lot loose. Russell Crowe's too looser stiff. of an actor and kind yeah. of lets it, lets things fly, you know? Um, it's interesting. And I think that's what that character I, I can kind of see it. I, to me, he kind of, he would, he does kind of look like a beefed up version of Edward Norton, I guess, in a way. Like well, he back was then, Russell you know, Crowe was know. pretty, I mean, if you remember him from like Quick and the Dead era, he was, you know, yeah, he was fit. He wasn't still, a big, you know. No, not, I'm, not not talking, now. I'm not talking about now, but I'm talking, but even no, then but he, he was still. Yeah. He was for the Brad Pitt role, not the Ed Norton role. Yeah. Yeah, the yes. Brad Pitt role. Yeah, no, he, I don't, I, he, he's too stiff. He's not, he, Brad Pitt has like a, a lightness that he brings to every role he does where you can kind of get a sense of his personality. And I think that's the personality yeah. of the Teledur. Yeah, you feel there's a little improv edge there where he's is it might be able to go with with anything. Now, Nick, th this is interesting. Helena Bottom Carter was was certainly not the first choice. She was actually the last, and the very first choice was Janine Garofalo. Oh, from SNL. I didn't know that. Yeah, what do you think? So, and and she's heard. got that. She's got that snarky, cynical edge to her like that you know that's her that's kind of back especially back in the 90s that was like her kind of thing yeah was that snarky edge now now she uh, suppose the rumor was she was uncomfortable with the sexual stuff she actually said in later interviews that edward norton didn't think she was right for the role and she was turned turned away yeah i had heard <laughs> reese witherspoon was also yep. one of the finalists um and it just would have gone such a different oh. direction because I, th I think helena bonham carter just was this was her character. I mean, this was like, mm -hmm. I think one of her greatest roles, if not the greatest role she's played. Yeah. Um, and she just brought so much to it. And uh, so I, I really can't see any of those other um, actors doing the role. And I'm sure if they had done it, maybe it would have been a, like, you know, an amazing performance, but I think this, you know, this so epitomizes, you know, the character that uh, I can't picture any of them doing it. Yeah. I think Janine Garofalo would have added probably a lot more humor to it than, you know, Helen Bonacotta, she added some weight to, to the character, even though she was as snarky, but yeah, a little more pathos, she's, but she's also heard the, her, her look is very, she looks like a vulnerable woman, you know, despite, mm -hmm. the, you know, all that stuff on, on the surface, but yet just her features, she's so like tiny and so, um, I remember her from an episode of Miami Vice. I don't know if you've ever ever seen it, where where, where Crockett is like he was dating this. She she played a doctor who was a drug <laughs> addict, and she was like dope, and she was you know shooting up um, uh, without him knowing. And she, that was a remarkable performance. And so early on in her career, yeah. I think she was only like yeah, she had to be a kid. Yeah, she was like I think twenty one. I think at the time or whatever. But she it was such a mature great performance that you know when i when i saw her in this film i was really glad to see you know 
that that she was cast. Yeah, things. yeah, so, and, yeah. And like Christy said, uh, Polanyuk Polanyuk did not write the screenplay. Uh, a gentleman called uh, by the name of Jim Yules did, and he's only written two. He's only done two screenplays. Um, this one, uh, he he considers this a romantic comedy. From his from his point of view, what he was writing it, he he says, I consider this a romantic comedy. Um, it, it is definitely satire, right? I mean, this is sure. this is not yeah. to be taken seriously. This is supposed to be a, a satire on a lot of different things. What it is to be a man, <laughs> uh, a satire on consumerism, a, yeah. a, 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 a satire on on possessions, and yeah, uh, a satire on on group mentality or mob mentality. There's a lot of things in there. Uh, I never thought about it as a romantic comedy, but then when you kind of think about it at the core, it is about those two people. It's a twisted, and I, I, and I it's, <laughs> it's a very romantic. twisted romantic comedy. I, I'd give it that. And I, and I also heard that it was uh, largely influenced by Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah. Do you guys see that? In, no, in yeah, there's, a, there's a couple of parallels. Um, there's some, there's some other, other films as well that, that were taken. Rebel Without a Cause was one that was cited. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's got it's got some DNA or some some echoes of of some of these other other classic films because um, it is kind of a love triangle, right? Because yeah. you've got yeah. Tyler Durden, you've got the narrator, which is Edward Norton or Jack, whatever you want to call him, um, and then you have you have Marla Singer. So there, it is it is a love triangle. It's just that the narrator doesn't realize he's in the love triangle, right? <laughs> you know, you know what's funny about well, th this film, Dean, is it just dawned on me. Uh, we did Goodfellas, we did Raiders, and we're doing Fight Club, and all these films in common have one leading lady. There you go, which mm -hmm. is odd, right? And and each of them, the movie does it odd or is it the norm uh, with with these well, types of maybe, films? Maybe I don't, I don't know. know. Is that but, but it's right? definitely a theme, and and yeah. each of these women are tremendous and hold their own in every one of these films oh yeah yep the good no, no, the good no, no, news no. christy is when we do heat there's two female leads there's amy brenneman and there's ashley judd so okay. when we get to heat there'll be two well, but we're gonna you. up it we're gonna double we're gonna double the quotient we're only gonna do films um, from this point don't, on don't, don't discount Di diane verona either yeah you know, that's that's great. true as well and natalie portman and natalie portman that's yep. a quartet so that's we're going to yeah. do that one. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so there's a lot of different, I guess there's a lot of ways to approach this film. Yeah. You know, you can, you can look at it from the, the biting satire. You can look at it at, from a filmmaking standpoint and be totally mesmerized. And some of that I was from the beginning. I specific, specifically remember the penguin scene mm -hmm. um, when he's in, when he, you know, when they're doing the guided meditation and he's in the cave and the penguin walks up and is like slide and, jumps up and slide. I'm like, at that point, I'm like, what the hell am I watching? Like, I really didn't, I didn't know what to expect because I, I don't know how much I remember of the trailers, but they were positioning it as a movie about guys that fight, not, not boxing or anything, but you know, it, again, the move, those movies in the nineties were, were something different. It was, a, it was a different type of thing. Yeah. Um, but then when you've got this, this penguin so walking up and, and saying slide and, and laughing and sliding away, it was just, okay, like, where are we going? So that it's funny you mention that because Fincher, I think, was annoyed at the way they marketed the film because fighting is really not at all what this what this movie's about. It's not, um, and no, they marketed not. it as <laughs> almost like a a, a a movie about fighting, and it's 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 barely like there's barely fighting in it. I mean, there it's in there. It's it's, you know, it's, it's fighting in it though. Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 yeah, a, but it's a pivotal thing, but it's and, to your point. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you're people are going to come in and to see. Not, yeah, it's not a Rocky not movie, underground Rocky or something. No, you know, which is how they market it. This right. is not. It's not about. I would, I would, right. And the penguins I would, I would were to show you that there was going to be satire. He spe yeah. they specifically did that for the reason that you just said without even realizing it. Yeah, and, and, and I think this is this. What am I watching? Yeah. This, this and could that actually whole dream like be... quality to uh, throughout yeah. the whole film. Well, yeah. you don't know. Yeah, yeah it's like or they're nightmare. already setting up like <laughs> what's real and and what's not real. Um, yeah. I would say that this is almost an anti-violence message as well, you know, because because yeah. it, it it shows the dangers of a group mentality of a mob mentality uh, when they when they just start to follow somebody blindly when so, when when people get blindly manipulated um, it, it, to, to like the uh, it, and and how it started out very innocently. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, with, with two, well, actually one person, but two people, we, we think it's two people. Uh, and they specifically say, don't tell people, 
right? That was the whole yeah. thing is don't say anything. It became part of the lexicon. Now it's a joke of, you know, what's the first rule, but, but it, that, that should tell you something about society that, you know, almost a, a, a statement that people can't keep their mouth shut either. Right. The first two stated rules was don't say anything, but then people, you know, when when uh, when Edward Norton means meets Bob Bob uh, played by Meatloaf, he's like, oh, you know, the first rule is I can't tell you, and the second rule is I can't tell you. It's kind of you know, people can't help when you tell them a secret, like th- not to say something, they can't help but to say something. So that might have been reverse psychology: is don't say anything, don't say anything, knowing that people were going to say stuff, knowing that their new human nature is to blab. That's, that's exactly your, what it was. That's a really good point. Yeah. Right. Because it it grew and it grew and it grew, you know, and, and that was the whole point was to, was to grow this army but that of was, people that could be manipulated. But this, 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 uh, Space ties into what I, what I was saying, uh, <laughs> in the beginning with, you know, like Andy's comment was there's going to be a lot of people who are going to take this movie very literally. Right. And people have, people have gone out there and started these stupid, you know, it's, <laughs> What 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 some people might or some men might take away from this is to well we we're in that same situation where we don't know how to fit in and the only way to really take our aggressions out is to do this kind of stupid yeah. stuff but that's not what the movie is absolutely. at all you're, you're absolutely right yeah it's not I mean, it's, it's, it's become it, um, even back then like you were saying that people were starting these underground fight clubs which again yeah. goes against the message right and right. there's that anti consumerism message which you know ties into it but nowadays i think people are also that that toxic masculinity you almost feel mm-hmm. like this was created today because it's yeah. these things that people are still talking about you know yeah um yeah and, and, and you would how- think it, nick you would you make a great a great point with the with, with the manosphere if you're not in, you know aware of what that is you should look it up but it ties in perfectly where people might think this is a calling card for that it's actually the opposite you know uh because it's not very misogynistic meaning in in its you know they, they this is an enclosed group of people that only interact with themselves, um, and they're they're they are led by one person. But the the greater goal is to uh, not. It, it they talk about like oh like making change in your life and doing these things, but actually they're they, all these people are just being mass guided by one person under yeah. the guise it's of making cult. changes in your life. And that was the whole the whole. Uh, it's a cult, like yeah. Type. Yeah, they, they lose, right. they lose right. their individuality at one point, right? They they can't even have names, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, no. it's 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 the reverse. Of, Carlson. When when you well, die, then then they death. see how they. But this they, they this have man to has no name. It. Yeah, so they justify it themselves. It's like kind of this exactly being part of a cult when suddenly you see something that doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. And then you try to justify like, oh, this is what you meant. It still fits. Everything still fits. Yeah. The yeah, programming, was, everything still fits, you know. that. And that mantra. was a great scene because that's when like like he saw that he lost control over – like he never had control anyway. But like, yeah, in Project Mayhem, no one has a name. And then then that one guy justifies. He goes, yeah, this man has no name, but in, in death you have a and name. And you have a name, right. Like they were, they were, they were taking this now and, and, and now like it was out of his control to even dictate that. Right. You know, yeah. and then they he just started saying his name is Robert Paul, and then everybody's chanting it, and he's draw and and Edward Norton's character is just going crazy. He's like, "This is insane!" Like the rational side of him, or what was left of his rational side, was this is insanity. Like you people are are crazy. But then there was the other side of him that was manip- totally manipulating this and and creating it. Very interesting case study. I always found that that part that moment in the film where he he recognizes what exactly is he's doing, essentially is. And internally, it's all internal. It's like this is all happening, you know, in his in his freaking head. I think I, I feel like you know, it's the Fight Club is inside, you know, and it's like we're all like trying to deal with those kinds of kinds of issues. Now we talked about the names, if people, you know, the only names that are mentioned are, are are Tyler Durden and Marla and Bob. Now all these other people who are nameless, you know, is this? This is all in his head. That's one way to look at it too. Yeah, him going to all these different states and 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 like all these people, all these people are like stand like like is that really happening? I don't. I think so. Think so I don't. I think, think it was, so. I think it was the it was that know. whole dual life where he he didn't realize exactly what he was doing, uh, not not understanding the, the the reach. He thought that Tyler Durden was just a friend, this cool guy that he kind of latched onto. Yeah. Um, who had some really cool wisdom and and some pop psychology about what it is to be a man and 
you know, don't let the things you own own you. And this, you know, we will fight and it was kind of fun. And then it developed into something. And, and meanwhile, this was his, his other aspect of his personality that was well, it, looking for that change in his life. Right, Christy? It, it was, it's funny. It's, it's the complete opposite of, of his primal fear character who, right. who knew he was creating a double personality, but in fight club, and I agree with Dean. I, I think it all, I don't think this, he's imagining all these things. I think he's, okay. He's struggling with this multiple personality, and that's why when it finally clicks, when he's like, "Put your put your tray tables up and your seat in the upright position," when he sees when it all starts to piece together, and he's like, "Holy shit, I'm Tyler Durden," and and it all comes together. It's like his psyche is now battling this 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 internal conflict he's having. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's all really happening. Um, yeah. I, at least I, I never thought it was, it was, he was imagining it all. Yeah. And, and, and Bob's death is squarely on the shoulders of the Edward, not Tyler Durden, but it's squarely on the shoulders of the Edward Norton character. Okay. Because when, when the first, when Eon, the character, our actor's name is Eon Bailey, the first space monkey showed up and he's standing out on the porch and they're like, get out of here. You know, it's not, it's not going to happen for you. And this, that, and the other thing. And then he, after three days, he gets in. And and Meatloaf's character standing out there, Bob, and and you know Tyler Durden comes out. It's not going to happen. You're too fat. You're too old. You know, and he packs up to leave. And right? He, and he walks he down the steps. I think he makes fun of his. He's like, "Your tits are too big." Yeah. Something. So he packs <laughs> up to leave, and Edward Norton, Edward Norton's character, runs down the stairs and stops him. Yeah. What we don't know, but what happens is he obviously explains if you sit, if you stay out here for three days, we'll let you in. Just take whatever we do. But Bob was never meant to. See, Bob walked away. So he was never meant to be in that program. And that, his death is squarely on Edward Norton's shoulders. Because That's true. He yeah. should have, he, yeah. if he, had he walked away like he was supposed to, because he, he couldn't even take the initial like, like badgering about right. get out of here and this, that, and the other thing. It was Edward Norton that said, oh, no, just come back and just stay here. You know, we'll hit you and we're going to do this. But then you'll get in. But then and, but, think about that it. Person was not, and he's the only one that died. No, think about it this way. But Bob also is aware of that. So Tyler, we see Brad Pitt telling him, you're too fat, you're too old, your tits are too big. Mm-hmm. And then we see Edward Norton come and get him as Bob's walking away. But to Bob, mm-hmm. it's the same it's one person. person. Yeah, He's Cornelius. just Edward Norton. So it's kind of <laughs> on him too, because he had to, at that point, be like, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> Like he yeah. just, he Much just like yelled Marla. at me, told me I'm too old. I'm too, I'm too this, I'm too that to get off the, the porch. Yeah. And then he just ran after same. me and told me, no, wait, stay. You'll be okay. Same just thing, well, I think same thing I, happened to Marla, right? I mean, yeah. she, when, when Tyler's not here, you yeah. know, he's like, are you looking for Tyler? He's in, he ain't here. So she just like looks at him, like turns around and walks away. Like what the, you know, but I think everybody, well that it's, everybody must've looked at him as this crazy guy, but so charismatic that we have to follow him, right? Because those yeah. first people that just see him beating himself up in the parking lot, and yet they're drawn to it and they start fighting each other with Fight Club. Yeah, right? yeah and, they're like, "What the hell is this?" You know? what, like, you know, and then, when, like- and then when they see him getting uh, beaten up by Lou, just pulverized, and yeah, you know what I mean? Like, they don't walk <laughs> yeah. away. They don't, you know. So they're like, <laughs> "Promise me, promise, Lou." So, so that, I think this, they you, must know, you don't know where I've been, Lou. You don't know where I've been. <laughs> it's a, it's a inspired piece of casting too. I mean, Edward Norton's just he's he's very he's a very thin guy. He's very small. Yeah. He's, you never look at this guy and say he's he could be the leader of this thing, and he could you know whatever. So he actually have, lost him, like twenty to thirty pounds to to play because he was just coming off American History it. X. I believe it. Yeah, to, he was, he was like twenty up. to thirty pounds to look. Yeah. So for him squeaky. to essentially create a more a sexier version of himself, a charismatic version, like and, and Brad Pitt. It's so it's that's and that's where Brad Pitt's you know casting comes in. Nobody else could could do that because Brad Pitt was you know he's and I think that's what threw was, everybody was like off, right? I mean, time, you yeah. Know. You you, so, you go into the movie seeing these Eric two characters, was. right? Eric, that's not What's a that? was. Oh, is. okay, he still oh, is. Yeah, is? is I have to say currently, is. currently. Still I hate, current. hey man, he's. He's like, 60, time in Hollywood. he's like 60 years One old. And greatest yeah. roles, yeah. Let's put it this way. He's aging very gracefully. There he's doing great. Uh, he's, 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 on the same, he's on the same aging trajectory as Robert Redford. He's getting yes, age exactly. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah it, it, and it's funny because when, when you watch the movie, again, when you go in blind, you're, you're seeing two characters. So you take that at face value. No matter – even yeah. with the – when I was watching when I was watching it for this episode, I was paying particular attention to the interactions between Marla – and, and Edward Norton's character. And if you just pay attention to her, 
you you can figure things out. What throws you off is all the other scenes with all the other people where where they're both there and they're interacting and they're, you know like yeah. the, the, like the scene in the car where Tyler is quote unquote driving, yeah, and Edward <laughs> Norton is in the passenger seat and then the two guys yeah. are in the back. Like you know, so it, it, the the clues are there, but they're so well hidden and camouflaged because of the rest of the movie, you're seeing this, this other character and you're seeing them interact and you're seeing them sell soap and you're seeing them go, go break into the, the, the liposuction place, you know? So it's really well done. If, if, if he had looked the same or kind of looked similar, you might've been, Oh, this is a, a dual personality. Right. But by having, like you said, by having yeah. someone totally so diametrically opposite to Edward Norton. And to have Brad Pitt at, literally tell him, in the reveal like he's like yeah everything he tells him everything at that point that was so brilliant <laughs> like yeah man you know so i yeah you needed somebody who was who was stronger somebody who's better looking than you who could excuse me quote you know fuck better than you and you know all this other stuff and you know i i just thought it was great so how long did it take you guys to to figure it out the or end. did you figure I it out? Not didn't hurry out. No, I, 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 Nick, Nick knew, Nick knew I it. I knew already. it before I went in. Unfortunately, okay. Like okay. I knew Rosie yeah. O'Donnell. <laughs> but I, it for millions of Americans. Yeah, why would oh, you but do that? Still, it's, it's, so still, it's still rewatchable. Like you know, every time oh, yeah. I see it, oh, there's no. things it's I catch. Like you know, so it's like, that's right. right. That's it's yeah. more than just that kind of movie. It's more than just you know a. And then you start thinking too. It's like like. The, the whole thing with Angel Face, you know, Jared Leto's character, yeah. you know, where Ed Norton's character is just beating him up. And if you look at it from the perspective of, OK, it's two people, you know, he's doing it because of a little bit of jealousy. Here's the guy who's now looking to be like second in command because, you know, you know Tyler's like, you know, favoring him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then when you yeah. look at it from like, you know, the other perspective, right, it's almost like he's beating up himself, right, because th- he's almost like. You know Tyler. He's he's like yeah. he's got you know Hollywood good looks and you know mm-hmm. so it's it's really fascinating. It's just a really complex complex show. Um, so the yeah, more you watch it, the more you get out of it. Yeah, I think there's just when you when you watch this over and over, I think you after you've seen it the first time, you start to watch it again to see the clues, and then yeah. I think you you start to transcend that. At some point, you stop watching it to watch watch the clues, and then you just kind of can enjoy it back, enjoy it again as, as for the filmmaking aspect of it. There was one clue, which, which kind of, there was one more clue that I guess if you were deft enough, you would have picked up on it. But when, uh, when Edward Norton goes into the off, the great, the great character actor, Zach Grenier, uh, he was in Deadwood. He's, he plays the boss, yeah, you know, yeah. um, when Edward Norton goes into the office and he's like, you know, you're going to pay me, you know, uh, all, you know, you'll pay me and uh, my job will just be never tell what I know. Um, and then he, he he punches himself and there's like the still frame. And he said, this reminded me of my first fight with Tyler. Yep. Which was a giveaway because his first fight with Tyler was a fight with himself. Yeah. And, and this and- was a fight with himself. This is where, he, and he fought himself here to bloody himself up so he could get, get the stuff. So, yeah. so there's a little, yeah. there's a little, another extra nugget, but you're not. You're not picking you're, up on it. You're, you know, yeah. because because Tyler Durden is real. We've seen him do things. We've seen him, you know, he wasn't a disembodied voice or a guy in another room or a shadow. He's We've meant, seen him as a real He's person. literally meant to distract you. Brad yeah. Pitt is meant to, to take you right, you know. Off the scent. And, and, and as an as the audience, you're following him. You're, you yeah. know, you're doing... He's having your same effect on the audience as he is in the in the characters yeah, in the film. Like, like you're, you're, for, yeah. first first viewings, you're not picking up that when they get into the car before the car crashes, they're talking to the narrator. They're talking to I, I refer to him as Jack, but they're talking to Edward Norton's character. Where every everyone addresses Edward Norton's character, no one really addresses Brad Pitt's character, and you don't catch that in the first viewing. Mm-hmm. But if you That's watch right. it over and over again, you know, as many times right. I have, yep. even when they're on the bus, the guy bangs into t- to to uh, Brad Pitt doesn't say a word when he bangs yeah. into Ed Norton. He's like, "Excuse me." So there's all these little clues that are peppered throughout it. But when they're smashing the cars. With- when they're smashing the cars, the alarm doesn't go off when yeah, you know go for Tyler. Brad Pitt's character. Go for, but then when, when he hits it, the alarm goes off. Right. But you funny don't catch thing, that. So. Funny little yeah. trivia about that is they both hated the Volkswagen Beetle, at least at the <laughs> time. <laughs> so they said that um there had to be a Volkswagen Beetle in there that they that they smash. And I that's the part <laughs> they they smash. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh and then there was some there was some again, it, it it's 
it seems to deal with heavy subjects and violent and it is bloody, but then there's all these light, there's some light touches, right? The conversations about who would you fight, right? Yeah. Who, who would you fight? And it's like, oh, I'd, you know, I'd fight William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> I might too. That might, that's a pretty good choice or you know, I'd fight Gandhi. So, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the early yeah. days of, of, in the excitement of fight club, when it was something new and a novelty, you know, they were still kind of, again, we, we consider it two people, but when they were having these conversations, it's actually, this is really akin to an internal conversation you would have with yourself. This movie, that's really what this is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it's an internal it, conversation. It, um, it's just, yeah. it's just, it's just kind of, you know, visualized in, as an extra person and if that's you hard were, to really sell. want to pick it apart and get to the psychology of it doesn't edward norton's character at some point say i fight my dad right isn't it him that says yeah. oh, I Brett, fight no, my Brett, dad. well tyler says that i fight my dad does he okay well i mean so they're yeah. the same person but you if you really want to break down to the psychology of to why we're we're witnessing what we're witnessing on screen mm -hmm. you know this dual personality person there are also those, those little clues but 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 to what you were saying dean is like it deals with heavy subjects but like i i do constantly i i love the line when they're in the bar and a lot of that was improvised where they're talking and tyler's like do you know what a duvet is and he's like why do guys like us know what a duvet is and he's like the things you own which you said at the beginning the things you own wind up owning you and that's that's actually something that plays in my head a lot because yeah you don't want the things you own to own you. These possessions we have should not be the most important thing. So as mm -hmm. dark as a film as it is, there's a lot of really good messages in it, which is why yeah, there's I some truth in there. I don't feel dirty. Unlike Eric, I don't feel dirty <laughs> after watching it. I actually, I feel like if this, this film, if you're, if you have the right frame of mind is more enlightening. Than it but is, if you have the wrong okay. frame of mind, it could really take you into some yeah, dark yeah. places. It, take like you down a, said, it could take you down you know? a destructive path, but because I, I, I'm I, in I can tell, I can tell you at the. <laughs> you I, are. I, I, I can. I, I can certainly week. tell you at the time. I'm sad in 1999 that they didn't blow up all the credit card buildings. That would have been a nice wish. I know. Right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. For me in 1999. But even think about that, like, like. Just how, kidding. If you put everyone to the same credit everyone was at zero yeah. everyone's bank account was at zero be it would be chaotic but if everyone was equal well that would change a lot of things that yeah, i mean a little yeah. misguided it was misguided it was a misguided uh thought but but the funny thing in, in is in the end and, and you think you go through this whole film with with really you don't really know what the point is right we don't know what the end game of this film is it's just the, these things happening and then he finds out he's got a split personality then he finds out there's going to be these bombs yeah he ends up executing the plan despite himself like he tried to stop his own plan and even and and actually didn't do it in time you know when he when he killed effectively killed tyler uh it was already too late and it was just kind of like this weird ending where they're just kind of holding hands and she, he's like you you met me at a really strange time and then like all the you know the trw and all these buildings did just he, kind of did he did, did he do it just to get her back no i think i think it was it right, was the whole guys, all these project guys brought, mayhem brought her back though but she you know she was ready to leave he put her on a bus and but then but then that's where see that's more in my theory of like these guys being in his head comes in mm -hmm. because they they are the ones that are there he he didn't go get her these guys grabbed her and brought her, her to him well because tyler and, directed you know, her not not edward norton's character tyler okay. is, is the one that's attracted to her right so that's where the, ro the rom-com thing comes into play yeah. it's like all this like you say despite himself he pull, you know pulls off the plan but he gets her but he gets the girl in the end too so is it, is, he he, is it doing this for her, you know, well, is, you know, or to, to be, you know, with her and, and, you well, know. I think Ty Tyler realized that he, that, you know, obviously there was the, the sexual attraction side and then the Edward Norton character really had no, no use for her. But then I think at the end, the, the two sides reconciled themselves and Edward, you know, cause at the end it was Edward Norton saying, you know, like kind of realizing that he really did have feeling, right. He's like, I really like you. And, and, yeah. you know, I really have feelings for you. And that was his gen. That wasn't his alter ego. That was him being genuine with her for the right. first time. And That's because he has the Valerian the route. Got some sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sleep. he kills the Taurus. Well, he, well, that's why he kills himself. Like he essentially kills Tyler. Kills yeah, Tyler. He has to. So yeah, which is I yeah, the guys. The guys in Illinois. Like, That's one tough yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> like when they're when, like <laughs> so I'm like shot in a, when they're 
He's like, go, go downstairs. Go downstairs. I need gauze. Okay. <laughs> he wants I'm, gauze I'm okay. for a gunshot wound. It's, it's okay. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> Did any of you got, read the got, book? Like, blasted in the face. No, I did. No. Christy, did you read the book? No. Yeah, I read the book. You did. Book's a little yeah. different. It's the did ending you read it is different. After you saw the movie, did it inspire you uh, to read the book? Polinick or? actually prefers the film to his book. Right, that's what hmm. I heard. And then there was and a controversy because overseas they edited the ending. China, I think in China, it just came out. Right, it just came out like and two they, years ago. They changed the whole ending. They changed the ending. That the buildings don't fall, and he it's just like a little. He gets arrested like he in goes, a mental institution. Which is closer to the book, because that's what yeah. happens in the I book. Know, he goes like, to a mental and and it could maybe play into Eric's theory that maybe this is all it was in his head. But the ending in the film is perfect. I mean, that's yeah. the building's falling. It's, well, it's nihilistic, it, you know. It's yeah, they make the state they make the statement, so, make the like, statement they wanted like to make. Seven. It's, it's yeah, well, that's like the seven thing. It makes it makes have there, you have ending. You could walk away with your own opinion. And that's absolutely I think great films should do that. And, and that's a director's job, I think, is to give you that. When somebody absolutely wants to, you know, no, it's this, and it's only this, and, you know, this is the way I want it, and this is the way, you know, but I, I feel like a director has done his job when he gives it to the audience and lets them decide what, what the film's yeah. about. But I sometimes think it's a you know? cheat, though, when you have to watch something more than once to really understand it. This, <sighs> this movie, it doesn't go that far, but there are yeah. others that I think do. Tenet. But I do like how tenant maybe some others you know but there's so many details to, yeah to, to, you know you can't you can't right it's a, to me it was an assault on the senses yeah mm-hmm. like everything about it was just like the, the way it was shot the way which was intentional you know, you know, right to make you feel right. like it so, was like a dream or a nightmare or so something that's that's phase one of of the experience it's like okay then you know yeah maybe you want to come back and see it in the theater again or you know when it came out on home video it's like yeah i want to now i want to digest it now i'm ready to kind of dissect this thing and, and if you choose to, if, you know, a lot of people aren't really as obsessed with films as we are, but it's yeah. just, um, I think, I think people at the time know. called it the anti date movie. It's like, it's not, <laughs> Can you it's, imagine? Not, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's not a movie you bring someone to on the first date. Like you're really not going right. to set up a, a, a healthy or Can you, you imagine know, you have going to be on the a same date? mind? Thinking yeah. this and, is going to be like an underground Rocky, you know? <laughs> yeah, or you're going impre- to impress your, you're going to press the girl. Hey, let's go see this Brad Pitt film, and it's like this, this, which like fever, dr- fever dream of a film. Like, you which, don't know what which to me is like. Intri- well, right. which is like, what? Well, <laughs> um, it it intrigues me, Chrissy, that you're such a fan of it, and hey, as, sorry, as a what? woman, it intrigues me that you're such a fan of it as a woman, being that it's it's full of like this sort of t- testosterone type thing like what what is it about the film that grabbed you from the start again that, I, you know, I think because i i think kind of like what nick said is like you you either feel more enlightened by what you're seeing in terms of possessions and consumerists and 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 if everything went to zero and equality and all of those things or you're you go the more destructive way of like oh how can i make you know, a bomb out of soap and how can I, and I went, yeah. <laughs> I went more the other way where besides the fact that, uh, you know, and, and this is not a hidden fact on this podcast, I'm a huge Brad Pitt fan. So that would lure me into it immediately. But I would also, I, I enjoyed Edward Norton. So I, I, I liked Fincher. So there were uh, things that led me to the film and then watching the film, I was blown away by it. I, I just, yeah. I thought it was brilliant. I just thought the message was brilliant. I never looked at it in a, Again, like you did, where it's like I felt dirty afterwards. I was like, "Oh, I kind of, I." They're it, not. It, I, they're, they're, I take that a little bit literal. They're going about it in a completely yeah. wrong way. Like you yeah. don't want to start blowing up, at, you know, a Starbucks or whatever they name the coffee house. But I understand what the, I understand what they want, like the message that they were trying to get across. Yeah, but but and it was, but there was also a secondary message which, which I think a lot of people lose because they 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 key in on the the urban terrorism and they key in on the right. the fighting. But there was a really important scene towards the end with Raymond K. Essel, right? When they went into the, when they went into the convenience store and they brought him out in the back. Right. That was a great. And, and Brad, you know, Tyler put the gun to the back of his head, and and Edward was like, "What are you doing? Like this is too much. You're gonna. What are you doing?" And 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 after that scene is over, you know, Tyler Durden's like, you know, tomorrow his breakfast is going to be the best thing he's ever eaten, and we'll never get to know that. Like, well, and yeah. then Edward Norton's character's like, 
you know what? I, 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 there's a meth, like I have to agree with his, like there was a, this made as crazy as it was, it made some sense what he, what he was doing. But, but it's true. You know, so it wasn't right? just all, I it wasn't all a, just, uh, you know, destruction and, 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 well, and I think it's a method and, of, of feeling you know, so numb in this, in, in this society. Yeah. You do these things to feel alive. To, to, yeah, like Raymond Kessel would have kept working at a gas yeah. station, but now he's going to go to veterinarian school because he had a gun yeah. put yeah. to his head and he's scared for his life that right. he's going to come back and shoot him. Even though when you weigh the two choices, you're, yeah, what's the choice? Yeah. When you weigh the two choices between death and 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 doing something that you thought you couldn't do, is well, the, yeah, there's really no choice. So yeah, there's a lot where, of interesting that's messages. That's where it could be. Ex- I mean, the message is there, but again, the the way it's delivered, I think, is also like that. How do you know that guy's going to go to veterinarian school? How do you know he's not going to be traumatized for the rest of his life? Well, because he's going to check fail, back in a few weeks or fail <laughs> or fail to go to veteran. So not only does he like fail and his Nick, you're so negative. Well, at least if, at least but, if he but goes, where, I think the point was to get go. The point is, there's so many, there's so many truths <laughs> in this movie. There's so many points that are valid that you're like, wow, that's true. And then the yeah. execution is so dark and twisted. Where if people do take it literally, that's where like these men's rights people kind of are embracing yeah. it, and you have all yeah. this kind of, you know. It, it, it becomes dangerous. It becomes where it's like you can take it to an extreme. You don't have to put a gun to somebody's head to make them change their life or see their way. Of course not. But, that's, Nick, but I'm Nick, just saying that's where this movie is like. It's so it could great. Lead you down that, but it could yeah, if definitely. you take it and say that's true. We need more people it, like right. Tyler. We need and to you know go in and just punch somebody in the face so they realize what reality is like. You know, no, you need to take the message, well, but leave the execution the message, sure. to the side. <laughs> What, exactly. what, that's what I, think, I mean, right. but that's what I mean, exactly. Christy, about being exactly. feeling dirty afterwards, because you, you're, you're, I knew better, you know, of course, when I seen it, you know, I'm not going to do these things, you know, whatever, but I could totally see somebody doing, you know, like, yeah. oh, you know, well, this, I did. Nick, I, this is uh, some risky, like, you know. Yeah, like Nick, Nick, seemed to, Nick seemed people to be started underground fight clubs and they got arrested. Yeah. And this came out before Columbine, yeah. which was problematic. Yeah. Columbine, Columbine was in happened. April, so it, the testings were done before, but it was filmed before yeah. Columbine. It came out yeah. in October. Well, yeah, that, okay, but so yeah, it so it was very and then a couple of years before 9-11. So those buildings coming Nick, down and everything, you know, it's like Nick yeah. seemed Nick seemed to be very worried whether or not this guy was gonna get a financial aid and get into veterinary school. It seemed like he was worried about the very esoteric things. Like not not that he was going to go to school. Like, what, what if he doesn't get the grant? What if he can't afford the books? And now he doesn't have his driver's <laughs> license. Well, you were, uh, graphic well, novel. That, yeah, he can't wall. register without the driver's license. The wall, right? The, when, when, they, when he closes the door and you see the human sacrifices, all those, you know, driver's licenses, licenses that he took, right? Yeah. So all those yeah. people went through the same thing. So he called well, them were they Were they quote unquote helped? Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. so were they? I don't know. They all he, had yeah. actually... breakfast the next day. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> or did they? Oh, they <laughs> too paranoid. Were they, were they too they paranoid to, their... to enjoy their breakfast the next yeah, day? Were they sick so, to their stomachs know. and living in I don't fear? Th- I don't think they had a great breakfast the next day. I'm sorry. Like, well, he, he took my license, so I need to move to another town and change my name. <laughs> well, they certainly couldn't drive to, to college and, and study. They were, they were human and he sacrifices. Can't register, he can't, yeah. can't register to vote anymore. Yeah, he can't register can't for school. He's got no license. <laughs> They got a do? whole new problem. They got to go to motor vehicles. Now. Nate, Nick found the loophole. He found Raymond K. Essel's yeah. loophole. It was right there. So uh, a little. It was a, a great Easter. scene, though. Excellent. It was. Scene. I love that. It was like intense because you don't know. Gun. He just taps him on the head with the yeah, gun. Yeah, I mean, at, at that point though, you don't know what's going to happen because they, you know, th- the the movie is about escalation. Things slowly escalate over time, and things get more and more out of quote unquote out of control from yeah. from Edward Norton's point of view. Things are getting out of control. So now he's pulling a gun on somebody. And 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 has it to his head, and it wasn't until after it was done that he saw that there was no bullet. So he was never right. there was never any any threat to it. Um, a fun little Easter egg: the bus scene when when Edward Norton's trying to get Marla onto the bus, and like I, I can't look at the bus. I, I, I'll know if you look at the marquee in the back. It's seven years in Tibet is playing right. on the marquee mm. in the back, well, which was Brad Pitt's film before before Meet Joe Black. Probably he filmed that right before. More interesting is they actually had, which is more not interesting. interesting. It's not more. It's as interesting. As interesting. Okay. <laughs> maybe it's more. <laughs> maybe it's more. What do we you have know? to hear it, and maybe we'll it'll vote. be more interesting. It could be more interesting. <laughs> we'll vote. The other marquees had Primal Fear and what was uh, Helena's film, yes. uh, Wings, Wings of the Dove, but they didn't. They couldn't show it, and so they only got seven years in Tibet. The T's actually cut off. Um, but they had all three main actors with films on the marquee. 
So was that more interesting or as interesting? Somewhat, it's somewhat I interesting. As, I think as interesting. Nick, kind of interesting. <laughs> it didn't make it into the film, so mine was more interesting because <laughs> you can watch it. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> it's verified. Mine is verified. Check mark. Mm. <laughs> Your move, Christy. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get there. I'm, I'm, so, I'm playing the board, Eric. Okay. <laughs> well, did, um, all right. Here's a trivia thing. Do you know uh, Leo DiCaprio's cameo in this movie? Have you heard that bit of trivia? No. No. Lay it on oh, us. That's yes. New. Yes. All right. Well, he's the, uh, go for it, he's the Titanic breath from the penguin. The, the, the breath in the penguin was taken out of Titanic. That's Leo's breath. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Wow! Yeah, Dean, Excellent, what's that Christy. now? You know everything. <laughs> so, so wait, wait. The, so the penguin, the the anim- the, the, the CG yeah, penguin's scene. breath was Did the same scene. breath as Leo in Titanic. In Titanic, Correct. when there was room okay. on the raft. Yes, on the door, the Jesus. floating door. Okay. Where she That's obviously of... could have saved his life, but chose not. To. Did he get so? Did did Leo get credit for that for the penguin breath? <laughs> That's a, that sounds like a royalty. Batman. That sounds like a Batman affliction. You have penguin breath. <laughs> I don't think he wanted penguin breath. Yeah. There's one person I want to give a shout out to in this okay. film, and uh, he's, uh, is the is the DP uh, Jeff Cronenworth, um, who did a remarkable job. Yeah. And had you know such a great look to the film and such contrast. I noticed like you know there are scenes that are more sort of vibrant. You know, this, those like really overly contrasted colors come in like green and reds like that are just so like, you know, uh, exaggerated and bright that, you know, and that could be a tell too, like in certain in certain shots of with with Brad Pitt, you know, well, like, like that could be. A kind of group. Yeah. You know, but there there are things like, you know, how that you, you, you take a photograph and you and you really go high on the contrast of the photograph and it's distorted, right? The people have done it on album covers and such where it's, you don't even recognize the picture anymore. It's sort of, cause it's so like, I feel like he did that a lot with the color, you know, the color palette of the film, which, which I thought was really remarkable. His dad well, was uh, uh, Jordan credit with who, who shot Blade Runner. So uh-huh. see, there they you got go. a lot of the influence there. Yeah. there you go. Well, um, well, you see that Edward Norton has a particular color palette. He's pretty much always in his white, work yeah. outfit you know and 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 tyler has just more of the all, all the flash all the different colors he especially at the end he's wearing like this really colorful tank top i mean yeah the, the hustler shirt is is one of the iconic uh uh pieces of wardrobe that he wears you know the red that red or maroon leather jacket so yeah um the, the character himself is built to be to get again to be what what Edward norton's of, character yeah. is not he yeah. is drab he is ikea Right, he is he mm-hmm. is very flat, yep. and then he meets this person who's very dynamic and wearing sunglasses inside the plane and just really cool, you know. So yeah, he's drawn he's drawn with a with a much more exciting palette and there's a lot more. Uh, you're you're allowed to have a lot more fun with the character, and then Brad Pitt kind of just plays. I think that helps. I think the wardrobe and I think the style of the character. I think it helped really help Brad Pitt bring that that like extra panache to the character. Like he's, that's what he's got. Like he's as, as weird as he is, he's just a really likable character, even though he doesn't really do great things. And he's very, you know, not very nice to Marla. It's like, you know, don't, don't mention me, don't talk, but then he's got, he's got this charisma to him yeah. that you're drawn to. And that, I think that's the whole, that's the whole yin, yin and yang in the, of, of the character. And I think that's why you buy in that he's a real character. Cause there's so, there, there's no droplets of Edward Norton's character in there, or he does a mannerism that you would, there was no tells like that. Those characters are drawn totally separate yeah. uh, with a, with a clear dividing line of Edward Norton is absolutely this. And he is not that. And, and like, likewise. So Eric, do, do you feel dirty after watching this because you <laughs> like Tyler Durden and you're like, you don't want to. Could be. No, seriously. Could like, be. because like, like no. to Dean's point, this is, He's, no, that's he's, exactly uh, what I'm. That's exactly uh, what I mean. It's, and everybody it's, likes it's, him, right? Even though they right. see he's, that he's just like he's great. He's guy. entertaining, and and because it's a film, and you're like, well, he's not real, so you can just put that to the side and enjoy it. But like Dean said, he's like he he doesn't have it, what a lot of film, redeeming qualities. He's not very psychologically. Nice to what the film <laughs> achieves is 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 making you look inside yourself mm-hmm. sometimes we Absolutely. all have we all like you know let's face it we all have a dark side you know whether you choose to admit it or not it's you know sometimes we're not as expressive about it 
but you know, some I feel like this film kind of touched upon some of those, some of those. Not that I'm looking to yeah. be a cult leader or anything like that, or no. you know, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, but, Brad Pitt said as much. Yeah. yeah, he he said that so. that he felt that this his character was about about just in general about people in society afraid being afraid to push through whatever it is. You know, not not doing something radical with your life and becoming an urban terrorist, but just in general, that that fear and, and that complacency. Right. That was that was what Edward Norton's character was all about is complacency. He shows up to work. He does his thing. It's, a you know, he's got a very bland vanilla life looking for something, but not not really realizing it. And that's where his alter ego sprang up of this person that was able to. And he said that, of course, I'm going to do it and drag you along is what Tyler Durden said to him is like, it's me that's always got to do it. Yeah. You know, but but that is an aspect of his personality that's still distinct. You know, those two those two personalities have not merged yet and, and have not reconciled each other. Yeah. And what's you know, so, so there's still that there's still that battle. You what's need that so deep yeah, what's yeah. so deep though about it is like when he is the Brad Pitt character, he knows that he's a figment of, you know, Jack's personality or you know, the real Tyler's personality, right? Because he's telling all these people, I'm going to, one day I'll show up and I'll be saying this and this is what you got to do. So he kind of knows. So to be that confident and arrogant and and yet still know this is not the real me. The real me is that little wimp, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. that's deep to me. That's like, you know, when you realize that, that just start having a, you know? But, but how yeah, can was, you still was, be confident? How ahead. can you still be like that if you know this is not who I really am? This is all an yeah. act. You know? he, he was a few yeah. steps ahead, right? He goes, yeah, we, yeah, you told us you'd say that. Right. And, and when he's in the police stage, you, go, you told us you'd say that too. <laughs> you know, like like everything that he said, in, in, well, you said you were going to say that as well. So now, you know, yeah. so yeah, it's like, kind of like yeah. he, he, he's fighting, yeah. he's fighting, he's fighting against himself yeah. and he doesn't realize, he doesn't realize that, that he was already thinking on that level that, that he was his own personality, his own, you know, major personality was going to try and, and stop all this. And his, his, his minor personality was already thinking ahead of that and already knew he knew better. Tyler knew better the, the, the tendencies of, of Edward Norton's character than Edward Norton knew of Tyler Durden. He didn't really know, like, cause he just thought of them. He didn't realize you, you're right, Nick. Cause, cause Tyler has an advantage cause he knows that he's not real. Exactly. Edward Norton's character, Jack or the narrator always thought that this was just a really cool guy uh, I'm enamored with him. He does things that I, I, I can't do and I can live vicariously. He lives vicariously through him, not really knowing he was actually living. He was actually doing it. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a complete non sequitur. Um, is this the yeah. first film to start Brad P- Pitt eating in movies? Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt? You know, Kel- actually, movies? Kelly made that point, Christy. She, she, like, I know to every movie that yeah, I've ever seen Brad Pitt do, he's always eating. I- yeah, I don't, yeah, he didn't do it in seven. He didn't do it in seven years in Tibet. Actually, he didn't do it. Was there a dinner I scene? He, in, there, are, there is a, there's a dinner yeah. scene in seven. So there are, no, but they are he's having eating, dinner. Like, because he's, when he's on the phone with Jack and he's, he's eating, eating an chips, apple. Like, when he first calls him, he's like, <laughs> like, no, he's, he's like, eating, he's, he's isn't shoving he eating, chips in his mouth. Like, isn't he eating an apple in seven at one point? I think he is. I think he's at a, at his desk or something. He's eating, he's chewing on an apple or something. Yeah. You know, I got to go back. I think you so. Go back to Thelma and Louise, or to, or Too Young to Die. Thelma and Louise, Louise is not. He's not do I think? I was going to say he's <laughs> not Dave. No, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, that's don't, don't. yeah. We all, we don't know what <laughs> what you mean by that. <laughs> oh God! All right, this this episode just got an E. What's it? <laughs> hey, we're talking about Fight Club. Here. Damn it, as an E. You know. This is as dark as it gets, man. All right. Well, let, let's let's talk about, you know, there, there's a lot to digest here. So as we do when we start to wrap up, let's go around the table for uh, some favorite scenes. And uh, in no random order, we'll start with Nick. Always with me. Um, I would say <laughs> I like I like the cop scene, right? Cause, um, when the detective kind of walks out, they're interrogating him and. And then you realize the other detectives are in on it too. They're 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 underground. I, yeah. I love that. And it's that satire too, because it's funny, but it's scary too. Like you know, they're gonna yeah. cut off his nuts or whatever they're gonna do, right? Um But I, I honestly I like everything with Helena Bonham Carter because she's just great. I think she had said that she like um she she was inspired by the late 
life of Judy Garland. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. I never she saw that bad. until she. I read that somewhere, and yeah. the fact that she's chain smoking. I thought this was a brilliant performance yeah. on her part. So yeah. every scene that she's in, really, I, I loved. So those those the are way, my the way Fincher frames her right with the, in that scene when the smoke is coming out slowly, like just the way he he frames her as well. Just really, the camera really loves her in this film. Yeah, and and yeah, that that police scene. You know, uh, you know, you come if you get up get up off your knees, you're gonna get a lead salad. That was improvised, by the way. You just Edward Norton just said that, and they kept it because Fincher loved it. It, it was not that it was, was great. It, it makes no sense. Yeah, I've never heard because of a lead no salad, sense. but you can imagine it. But you know, lead you're gonna get a lead salad. That oh, would sound man. like somebody that's never fired a gun before because they wouldn't know what cool thing to say, right? So, exactly. It's like you know. All right, Eric, what do you got? Oh, uh, I, I I think I'm gonna have to agree with Nick, but I think specifically the scene where. Um, where she's has taken the the sleeping pills, yeah, and he comes mm-hmm. and and Brad Pitt shows up, and she's like, "Did I call you?" You know, and he takes her out of the apartment, and then the paramedics show up, and they're like, "Hey, and, you know," they're knocking on the door, and she's scene. yelling, and, she, and she's yelling back to them, "Hey, you know, she's she's crazy, she's you know, she, <laughs> she's like wheeling," and of course, it's a great scene. I do like the the sex scene as well, where he, you know, again, Brad Pitt comes to the door. He's wearing the rubber gloves that he's, oh, like, yeah. want, to, he's like, you want to join us? You know, you, you know, he's, and it's, yeah, that's, that's all, that always. Uh, the head of uh, Fox was offended by him wearing the glove and, and <laughs> wanted that edited out. Really? And, and then they saw the laugh yeah. that it got and they were like, okay. Yeah, and they yeah, saw the laugh that it got and hilarious. Started, it. And Brad Pitt just, again, improvised just putting the glove on because he thought it'd be funny. It's hilarious, and it's his delivery in that in that scene where he's at the, in the doorway. It's just yeah, he's picking yeah, his so belly great. button. He's got the glove on. This is so great. It's, he's, you know, that's a good actor. You know, he's you know he's really, as Dean pointed out, he didn't take him seriously at first. But you know, this this could be, um, his probably his best film. I think, or one of them. Yeah, one of them, and especially Easily. you know maybe top three. Easily, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Christy. Uh. You know, it's 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 hard um, because I, I love the entire film. Uh, I I would say the scene that Eric uh, was just talking about when when she has the lump and and Brad Pitt yeah. goes there the first time that it's just it's just a really it's just a really good scene uh, um, be- between uh, between them when he's dancing. It's just it's very loose and it's just when the, the ambulance comes and then she's yelling at the paramedics like that. You know, she's a waste yeah. of, of human of human uh, like a human, human waste, life. which yeah. app happens to be on with, with the soap when they go uh, to the um, to steal the uh, to the liposuction plays. Um, I really like the 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 bar scene when, when they first get together before the first fight, mm-hmm. like when they're sitting down and they're having that conversation, because I think it, it lays the groundwork for what's going to happen. Um, where these, I mean, it's one personality, but you have these, this one person, but you have these two personalities to this one person, you know, knowing that now and just sitting down having this conversation. And when you look back on it, you can see this, there's, there's a lot of conflict, you know, between them. Um, yeah. I it's it, I I is I I like when uh I like and then yeah I, I mean I can go on but when the whole Robert Paulson scene when when they throw Meatloaf's body down and like you're just like this is completely out of hand like when they're all standing around they're making soap he's got these guys just doing his <laughs> like doing everything for them like they're they're cleaning the house they're they're making soap they're making bombs and then you know Meatloaf gets killed he's, they throw him on the table and then it's just this weirdness of like. Oh, we're gonna just adjust now because now we're gonna give him an like like we were talking about earlier. I think Nick said it where now we can you know, we'll we'll make it fit this we'll make it fit now. So we'll we'll say you're allowed to have a name in death. Yeah. Because you can't have a name in, in Project Mayhem. It's so, almost like they're discovering it, like, oh, this was another yeah. test. And now we know yeah, that once you die, just, you have a name. Yeah, you know. Just like any other cult, it's just like as yeah. things go on. You have to you make, make something up to fit it to yeah. justify it, right? Yep. To justify exactly. what's happening. So exactly. I, I think that's also a really good scene. But honestly, cool. the, the whole movie is just for me. I just completely. I, I, it's just such a it's such a good movie. I like um, a lot of the life lesson scenes. So yeah. the chemical burn scene, where yeah. you yeah. know he's trying, oh. like he's he's fighting with. Obviously, he's fighting with himself, but we don't realize that, and and kind of like 
you have to, you don't go to, don't go to your happy place. Deal with the pain. You, this is real. It's happening now. Deal with it. And he's trying to, he was trying to Zen out, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, realize you're going to die. Like you have to realize it, that you're going to die. And then the scene, like I said earlier in the car, there's a lot of these scenes of, of you got to lose, you like, you know, I've been trying to tell you, you have to leave for, you know, give up control. Stop trying to control everything. Like Let's his go. alter ego, his alter ego was trying to, to educate him that way. He was trying to, you know, so, so I like those scenes because a lot of the other scenes between Brad Pitt and Edward Norton were kind of somewhat comical or they're living in the house together, you know, so, so there was some of those intense scenes and most of them were, were like those life lesson scenes that Tyler yeah. was trying to show, you know, those were some of the more intense scenes, but it was, he was, he was always doing that to try and just make a point. You know, it was always about just trying to make some type of a point to him and, and, it was his his alter ego trying to bring him closer and bring him out of of the shell that he was in, and I guess you know I guess merge the two personalities at some point. I mean that that would be the end result is to but for that, the two of them to coexist. That's a great but, but that choice. acid thing. Um, yeah. It also, if you look at it from the cult perspective, they're being branded. You know, like yeah. every oh, yeah. saw a couple of characters at the end, like kind of look, I got one too. You know, yep. so it is a sense of power. So as much as you're kind of teaching them giving them a life lesson you're also saying like you know i own you a little bit or you're, yeah, you're part, part of yeah, my, the, you know? the, the creepy guy so. with the, like the total like the neck brace he's like you gave me this sir <laughs> yes it's like, exactly it's like he's like you know, there, like what happened to that guy crack? it's like like what did they, they do like a bane on him and crack his back open i mean like, is this a test <laughs> is this um, a, you were I, here last I, week sir funny thing about the chemical burn scene is brad pitt didn't want his parents to see this movie and so he i I think he, if it's true or not, showed them that scene, and then they were like, yeah, "We don't want to watch this movie." I don't blame. Him. Want, right, we're good. He, he didn't want it's them intense. to see it because he thought it was just too dark. Yeah. Well, but see, he could have showed the scene with Lou. I mean, that's just a that's so just a scene. Punch. like all the fighting stuff you can kind of handle, like bare knuckles, and yeah, they're they're sweaty and they're slapping each other around. But no, the scene he, with when, Lou is just brutal. When you he know. beats up Jared Leto, it's it's that's, that's brutal. That's that's, that's, that's brutal. Tough. Yeah. That's I, tough. I cringe. I cringe a little bit at that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's never going to be the same. I mean, that's it. It's yeah. Not, that's it. Yeah. Because I see like his, gum, his gums are all like swollen or he's like a little, little small tooth. It's like the gums yeah. are swollen. All he's a mess from. Yeah. Yeah. He was a mess laying on the ground. Like bring him to bring him to the hospital. You know, it's like oh, now God. the guy with the mutton chops is wasn't he in the crow? Didn't he play one of the? Wasn't he Fun Boy or? No, that wasn't the, the no. same guy. That was a no, different it's guy. Not, it's not. Okay. No, that wasn't Mike. No, no, Michael. No, the, that guy that was Fun Boy was in the game. Um, he was actually, oh, yeah, he was yeah, actually yeah. at the, at the end of the game, he was the ambulance after Michael Douglas jumped off the building when he went to kill himself and landed on the, on the, on the big trampoline thing. or whatever it was. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 he's like, Oh, you've yeah. got glass in your eye. That's Michael Mass Massey or Massey. Uh, he was, he was in the game. He was fun boy there. That was, that was his, that was his turn there. Okay. Um, he didn't do a lot of acting unfortunately after the whole Brandon, Brandon Lee thing. Uh, um, and Dean, before yeah. you wrap it up, yeah. interesting that you did not bring up that a lot of the support group names, um, uh, Cornelius was Planet of the Apes, <laughs> purposeful, yep. purposefully, um, and then De Niro characters, I think. Rupert. Uh, Rupert. Rupert. And then. Um, Rupert Pupkin. Yeah. These are all Fincher's favorite films, right? I mean, well, is he but, referencing but no, think, some uh, of his favorite. Uh, Pal Palinic named them. I think that was oh, from okay. the book. Yeah, I think that was from the book. Okay. And yeah. I didn't know that there was a Fight Club too. It was like a graphic novel think, type yeah. that yep. he put out. Yeah. It, yep. Yeah, and then there's a, th there's a third one. He's working on a series named, of. Uh, so Jack's name in that, or the narrator's name in that, is Sebastian. Yep. Which I yep. will not. And Tyler, Tyler makes a uh, and, recurrence. Yeah, when, when Meatloaf see when Meatloaf sees Edward Norton, he's like Cornelius. Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> Your your meatloaf impersonation is okay. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> but uh, to give the it's okay to cry. <laughs> he's he's my he's one of my favorite characters in this movie. Yeah. He's so sympathetic. Like he was did not yeah. belong there. Like he's you know he, that yeah. suit was a hundred pounds. It's okay to cry. That's, that's why he and that's why he's the only one that doesn't have his shirt off. Because one of the yeah. rules is yeah. you have to have your shirt off and no shoes, yeah. right? But yep. because they didn't want to show the fat suit underneath, you yeah. Know? So that would yeah. have been that would have been something, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can't, you wouldn't be able to unsee that. Yeah, they right. actually made two. One had nipples and one didn't, but they didn't know too much. Well, oh but they didn't know if they would be offended. The studio with, yeah. with showing the nipples. Amazing. I think they use both. But men have nipples. Yeah, do they? It's okay. All right, duly noted. But the the author let me go let me go check. The author deserves credit though for inventing. 
the cigarette burn uh, phrase, yeah, which I always thought shirt. was what yeah. it was called. That little little thing that you see on yeah. the screen of you know thirty five millimeter films, real. which yeah. no longer nobody ever makes you know or projects yeah. films like that anymore. But they inserted uh, the director inserted like little clips throughout, you know, little one shot things. And in the beginning, yep. apparently, there's four moments where you see Tyler's character. I've only yep. caught yeah. two of them. I don't know if the rest yeah. of you caught the other ones, but I think it know, happens. It happens so fast, four, you know. The, the obvious one is in yeah. the uh, in that you know group meeting where he you, you see him for a second with his arm around one of the people, you know. But um, and this is really great. early on in the film, yeah. too. Yeah. Right it before oh, before really they actually right. meet each other. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, they start messing. They start messing with you. Early. I mean, that's the whole thing. Is you yeah. you you're seeing you're you're seeing you're like, oh, inserted what was that? frames. Like, it happens and, so fast. You're like, what's yeah. going on? So it, it Peng- jolts you it's like the penguin, making you yeah. realize, okay, this something's off. Something's you not right. You don't know. You know? Yeah, you don't know. What, and then you know the, the 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 plane splitting in half when he's talking. Like, there's just so so much visual stuff to chew on. You know that you're you're. Like I don't know, I forgot who said it, but yeah, you're almost off balance because you're you're trying to take in the visuals, but then you're also enjoying the story. You know, the story is a whole other thing. So, so that's how I think that's I think it's kind of like look look over here like a misdirection. So you 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 know you you you're not paying attention, and maybe if if they had didn't have all these other things, you might have been able to pick out what's chaos, what the, twi- what the twist is. But yeah, because it's so it's so chaotic and so visceral that you're, you're, you're just trying to keep up with the story and, and pay attention. And then at the end, you're like, what the hell? Like, what the hell? I remember at the, I was like, what the hell just happened? Like, what, what, yeah. what, what happened here? Another you know, great- and, you, and, and to Nick's point, it was a movie. I don't know if I saw it twice, but, but you want to go see it right away. Oh, just to experience it again, not to, not to pick it apart, but like, what was all of that? Like, what was, what, what was all this? Yeah. You know, I think that's, a, that's a great, visceral experience of a rewatchable like nick said like like yeah some of them you want to watch to you need to pick out all these little things because you weren't paying attention or easter eggs those are those are popular things but with this one i think just because there's so much to watch and so much to take in like visually or paying attention to the message or whatever that that it does bear a a lot of repeat viewings for different reasons like i said once you get through the Mm -hmm. the gimmick of figuring out like when did people know and who knew um, you kind of move on from it and, and, and then you're just able to watch it as a, as a as its own standalone film. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I that's going to do it. What? Wait, I have a trivia question. Sure. sure. More. Um, do you know where this idea for the book was born from? Yeah. He went on a camping trip and came back. Uh, he was assaulted or had some type of, was beat up or something and didn't want to tell people at work. No, he didn't, want to, he didn't want to tell the story of what happened. It's not that he didn't want to tell the story. He went to work beat up and no one acknowledged it. And he thought how know. odd that mm. no one, people were like, so how was your weekend? <laughs> he's, got like, <laughs> he's got like a black eye and he's all beat up. And no one, like no one at his job said what happened. And he was like, what an odd, what an odd social thing to to work with these people but no one acknowledged no one something happened to him as as, yeah. as a, they that's, just yeah, ignored it it's just it's pretty wild you know, that it's, it's a little weird yeah, it's crazy cool. well all cool. right on, on that all right. on that trivia note we're gonna end it here uh thank you everybody for joining us we appreciate it you can follow us on social media at 3324 podcast that's an instagram facebook Check us out on YouTube as well. We've got video versions. So if you want something playing in the background or you want to show people a cool podcast, that's also on video. You can go there at 33 podcast, 3324 podcast on YouTube as well. So we're going to thank Nick for joining us. Thank you so much, Nick. Christy, thank you so much for joining us as thank well. Thank you for having me. And for Eric, this has been Dean asking you to please be kind and rewind. You've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 